Be clear. Move along. What's up, dudes? What's new? As a live service game, Star Citizen is always evolving. And the same can be said for the UI. As new gameplay, design innovations, and quality of life improvements all play a role in sculpting the current UI design. But with so much going on with the game, we often and easily overlook the fine UI details. Now is as good a time as any. Together, let's get better acquainted with the latest design innovations currently packed into the UI implementation. For starters, the FPS UI breaks down into three important sections. Your vitals, weapons slash utilities, and the map. In the early beginning stages of Star Citizen, things were a whole lot simpler. And by simple, I mean the UI simply didn't exist. But as features come online, the need for clear and concise UI became apparent and frankly, a wanted necessity. But before we get started, character selection. I present to you my latest and greatest creation so far. The hair, the eyes sealed the deal for above average creepiness. I still need to work on my technique and additional designs. But if you have ideas, feel free to share with us and send it in. But any way you slice it, Doc is tough and he's gonna be hard to beat. Back to the layout. Let's get started with weapons and utility. The weapon UI appears at the bottom right corner of the screen. This can easily appear intimidating, but that's only because it has yet to be explained. At first glance, this can be overwhelming, but by the end of this video, you would know it like the back of your hand, gaining more knowledge than your average Star Citizen player. Let's start with the basic output. The number in green is the number of remaining bullets in the loaded magazine. Directly parallel to this is a green vertical bar representing your loaded mag. As the ammo leaves the gun, the number and bar will shrink down. When you equip or drag a magazine to your person or armor, the total bullet count for all equipped magazines appears in white. Now here's an important observation. The two white vertical bars indicates that you have at least, at a minimum, two mags remaining. You could have more, but it will only show the two bars. If there is only one bar, then this indicates that you are down to your last magazine. So plan accordingly. Notice the three white bullets. This is the symbol location for the gun's current fire mode. The three bullet symbol tells you that the gun is in full auto mode. Two bullets is three round bursts. And of course, a single bullet is a single shot. There can also be custom symbols depending on the gun, like a thunderbolt. Also note, when your gun has more than one fire mode, you will see multiple red bubbles directly below the symbol. Pressing B switches the fire mode of the weapon. The backpack icon only displays when you have any of the associated ammo stored in your backpack. Also, upon expending all the ammo equipped to your person, 
the white vertical bars will disappear and the white number count will display all the ammo in your backpack along with the backpack icon. When auto retrieving ammo from your backpack, a blue arrow indicator will be displayed. It takes approximately six seconds to retrieve and load ammo from your backpack versus three seconds when the ammo is equipped to your person. Utilities such as grenades and med pins will display their count in white and seamlessly get replaced by the backpack supply. The red bubbles indicate varying types, which can be swapped using the buttons G and 4 respectively. There is also a small section dedicated to mouse clicks, holding R to holster your weapon, and left shift to hold your breath while sniping as well as other varying and useful tips. That covers everything related to the weapons UI, but let's do a quick recap just to be sure. From this screenshot, it is clear to see that the user has 13 bullets left in the gun. The gun is currently in fully auto mode, which is one of two modes available for the gun. He currently has equipped 105 bullets as well as additional bullets in his backpack. Next up, Vitality. The Vitality section displays icons representing the various states of your character. Note, an icon will usually display when something is not normal or irregular with your character. Displayed are some of the more common icons that you should familiarize yourself with. Note, icon colors will change based on severity, from blue to yellow to red. If you happen to forget the name, or if you would like to see the full list, check Moby Glass and simply hover over the icon. From bottom left to right, it shows your current jurisdiction, Hurston Dynamics, your crime stat of zero, the current gravity, atmosphere, air pressure, temperature, and radiation of the environment. But note, your pressurized suit will try and maintain its own environment. The icons on the top right of your screen to the bottom right of your screen are your health, your body temperature, your heartbeat, oxygen levels, and drug levels. The map contains two small indicators. The one on the right indicates that you are in an armistice zone, which means you cannot walk around with your weapon in hand. The one on the left means the area is being monitored and you will get in trouble for any crime committed. Aside from that, one of the cooler features in your common and well populated areas is that you can mark your route and the path shows on the map. Keep in mind that this will not work at all locations, areas, or even floor levels. But for the main areas, it comes in handy and can be very reliable. Once the route is marked, the path and distance will be displayed on the minimap. With the vitals, maps, and weapon UI covered, let's go over bonus tips and final thoughts. The 
the full UI is only visible when wearing a helmet. Missing UI sections and red circles is a great indicator that your helmet is missing. The reticle option labeled equipped puts ammo clips on your person while the reticle option labeled store puts ammo in your backpack. Reloading a partially loaded clip will actually change it out for a full clip and put the partially loaded clip back in inventory. In the future, Use the map waypoints to quickly reach important areas once the unexplored pyro is online. Get into the habit of checking the various modes for your weapon. Looking for a fully auto pistol? Check out the Gemini LA-86 with a 25 round clip. What are your favorite game UIs? your favorite character designs, and your thoughts. Thanks to everyone for watching the video and showing support. And as always, Godspeed. Uh, I'm Rick Porter. I am your CIG design director. So just about all the design departments for both Squadron and uh, Star Citizen report to me. Uh, my name's Edward Fuller and I'm a I'm senior principal system designer. Today's topic is jump points. Will players with crime stat be allowed to jump at the pyro gateway as transient jump points will not be in 4.0? If you have a CS3, then uh, ATC will not allow you to, to make a, a jump through a permanent jump point. And it's also worth pointing out that it's on both sides. Yeah. That ATC check is on pyro as well. So say you you go down and do your, your murder in, in, in pyro, obviously you're not actually earning any of those crimes with the UEE. So if you go through, there won't be a problem. But if you then cause a, a ruckus right outside the jump point there, those will be okay, crimes so, that so. will prevent you from going through. Yeah. How, how do you clear a crime stat in Pyro? Incarcerated by the oh, law yeah, enforcement. Oh yeah, you could be incarcerated. <laughs> and end stand. up in jail. We've got some uh, cool new areas uh, in uh, in Pyro where yeah. we want people to adventure and if there happens to be yeah. a way to clear a crime stat there, that wouldn't be out of place. Yeah. Pyro, you know, if we're talking about the entire star system here, like if this is the entire star system, this much is lawless. This much is free form, do whatever the heck you want. This little area. Yeah, I'm not that's sure that's small enough. The, 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 this little <laughs> area here that surrounds the jump point, that's where you know the infrastructure is there. If, 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 you, if you try to cause trouble around that jump point, then that's where you're gonna generate a crime stat and it might be difficult for you to get back. Will the jump through the jump point consume quantum fuel? And if yes, how much? Using permanent <laughs> jump points will use quantum fuel. When you're attuning to a jump point, it'll let you know how much fuel that you need, so you'll never be able to like go halfway. You're gonna start a jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, the jump drive won't let you go unless you have enough fuel to make, yeah, it, exactly. make the entire trip. What's stopping us from falling out of the jump tunnel and arriving earlier in the other star system, kind of like a shortcut? First of all, in order to fall out, you have to take enough damage on your ship that your jump drive overloads and can no longer support, you know, your travel through the to the tunnel um, <clears throat> so you're gonna you're gonna take your your shipping to take damage your wear and tear like you're gonna come out of this in not great shape if you survive that exit you're not gonna be where you intended to be I, I can't guarantee where you're gonna end up yeah but it's not gonna be where you in, like where the where the um, it won't be the jump happy, point ends it won't up. be the happy part of it's, pyro it's gonna be on the edge of space and if your ship has enough quantum fuel, and if you if your, your ship's still in a good enough shape, maybe you could you know get to where you wanted to go. Yeah. How difficult are these uh, jump tunnels supposed to be? <laughs> I mean, to a certain extent, it's, it's expected to be like a bit of a roller coaster. Um, for the for the permanent, like the stable ones, 
like the reason why they're so important is because they're large enough to be stable and in pretty much any ship can get through there. Yeah, like the highways of commerce. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're reliable, right? But 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 it's right. There is a difficulty to every jump tunnel, right? So yeah, you can't um, just specifically. Coast. Yes, yes. Yeah, so you can't coast. You can't you can't walk away from your seat because you have to fly it. You have to avoid the edges of the tunnel. You have all the ob obstacles in the tunnel as well. Obstacles in the tunnel as well. Turbulence in the tunnel. Smaller ships will have more turbulence. So they'll be contending with it even more. The larger ships, which will have maybe less turbulence, but then they also have to deal with the obstacles in the tunnel, just as the, the small ships, and they have less less space to maneuver. So in 4.0, we're only going to have the one jump right. tunnel. Talk well, about you say one, but they are they are procedurally generated. Yeah. So Talk well, about you say 4. one, but they are they are procedurally generated. Yeah. So we're not we're not going to uh, craft the procedural yeah. experience yeah. to be super tough. People will still probably fail and some of them will choose to fail to have the experience sure. of what fail yeah. looks like. When we did the episode on jump points, the obstacles weren't they weren't th there. The obstacles weren't, weren't there. there. Yeah. The obstacles weren't there. Will obstacles be there when we launch for 4.0? Is that still our intent? I, yeah. I just saw a preview of that earlier this week. I'm excited. Yeah, okay. it's in-game now. You know, some random shots could start a fire. Like, yes, you, if you shoot the thing for like three and a half minutes, you might be able to start a fire. Yeah, we, those We values. weren't going to sit there for three and a half minutes. So we showed to the last like three seconds of it igniting. But you have, to, oh, how will the different jump drives affect jump point gameplay? They will affect uh, like uh, the how well you are able to handle the, the turbulence in uh, the the jump tunnels. Yeah. It's the steering of the ship. It's the your roll and and pitch. You know the speed and things that the, the, yeah. Because you actually have to fly your ship. You you still so use. Jump drive. Ultimately, there's this, this distortion, right? And that's effectively effectively acts as your your health to, to whether you can actually survive getting through the, the tunnel or not. So, uh, combat inside. The jump tunnel. If you and switch out of nav mode while you're in the tunnel, you will get booted out. That's and a fail. Damage. Anytime your jump drive turns off, is a fail. Oh, because you because switching because it out must of be nav tuned mode. and it must remain tuned for the entire experience. Now you've got five dudes out the front of your ship with rail guns. I'm like I'm not locked down by nav mode, bitches. Well, and they start firing at the guy in front of them, guy or gal in front of them. Yeah. Sounds, sounds like something that, that sounds we like, need to uh, test. Sounds like something we need to try. <laughs> <laughs> once, once it leaves the uh, the zone of your ship, like the, all yeah. bets are off. Yay, jump points, yeah, I got from one system to the other. Now let's try to kill people. Like sure, that's what sure. happens five minutes after. Yeah. But the so thing, now they go in, they start loading people up with rail guns. And sure, but the, the current design that is anything that leaves the zone of your ship gets booted out. So yeah. like if you any projectiles leave the zone of your ship, they should theoretically get booted out of the tunnel. Try it, people, I wanna know. <laughs> they don't sound like they know, do they? They haven't tried it. Try it, let me know. But by the time they play it, we will have done it. Oh, sure, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Why have we decided to group everybody right in one place, right in front of the jump point and have them sitting there waiting for their turn? But as soon as that opens up, that's your entry. And you can't enter from over here or over here. You have to go through the doorway but it's actually a physicalized space. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. To so the the griefing. That's, that's what this question well, really it, is. It's fine. It's really fine. about I, the griefing. I think we could probably just start from from the the the, the top, get away from the jump point itself, and just yeah. talk initially. Because you, you had oh everyone's queuing outside. They're just queuing in front of it, yeah. sitting ducks, ready to be Why shot. Why do you want everybody to die? That isn't the case though. So when you arrive and you're going to be QTing towards the station before the jump point, jump point's off to the side, right? So you're going to be arriving there and you're gonna call the ATC, right? So when you call the ATC, and let's say they do put you into a queue, you're already quite some distance away from the jump point. And as long as you're within range of the ATC, you're in the queue. And the, the, the range expands past the station and past the jump point. So this is a huge range. And in that space, you can be in SEM or NAV, you can be buzzing around, you know, you, you can be tens of kilometers away from anyone else. You can put space between yourself and you're still in the queue. You're still in the queue as long as you don't leave that really big You don't range. have to stay in nav you mode. You don't have to stay in nav mode. Okay. You can defend yourself from people. You know, they, they, that, that's a misnomer that you have to go cool and then sit in a big line ready to be shot at. That's not the case. Okay. So that's the first major change. It's not a change, but that's a clarification of exactly how it works. 
After that, yes, you're right. Then we're on to turrets. <laughs> turrets and AI. Uh, a, 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 there's definitely AI <laughs> Navy ships there. There's definitely turrets. Yeah, I know. I shot myself in the foot. But, but that's what it is, right? These things are in our game and they are going to be the thing. It's, it's, it's a dangerous verse out there, but we don't want to make it punishing for people who just want to like go through a jump point, for instance. So we're going to have things to, to protect the, the player there, whether that's turrets or AI. And if we have, if we, those security ships and those turrets aren't cutting it, we will, you know, take more drastic measures, whether that's like um, zones of protection or shielding or like whatever it takes to make the game fun. That's yeah. our goal. Yeah, yeah. The game is fun for everybody. If you want to be a griefer, I'm going to give you that experience. But the people that don't want to be griefed, they need to have a safe place and they, they need to know where they can go to be safe. Um, and we need to make sure that there's places in the verse for them. So there are areas for for safety and security, even in Pyro. Obviously, you come to you're coming to the end of your jump tunnel. You're everyone's coming out of the same exit point, maybe a kilometer across from each other or something like that within spitting distance of each other basically. The shotgun is the divergence, which allows them to not rear-end each other on exit. For folks traveling in groups, you know, I mentioned that wait for the, you, when you call ATC, you'll be able to see how many people are in the queue. You can wait, and you get in the queue with your friends yeah. and whatever. So you, when you arrive, you will still be in close enough proximity yeah. with your friends to help each other out and stuff. Yeah. That there might be people who don't care about their crime, say, I live in Pyro now, I'm never going back to Stanton. Uh, uh, what happens if you kill a crew member or pilot during a jump? Then uh, you will simply respawn wherever you last registered your spawn point. Can you tow ships through a jump point? No, you can, you can tow ships through quantum trump jumps. Um, but you can't tow a ship through a jump tunnel. Nothing can be in the jump tunnel that wasn't tuned to it and stays attuned to it for the entirety of the time to get to the other side. Um, what can you tell us about how transient jump points will be discovered in the future? Finding them with, with the right radar and the right ship. Like those, those radars don't exist right now, yeah. Yeah. but we will create them just specifically for the, uh, the transient. Yeah. Just don't want to. There's absolutely nothing that, that says we, we can't have a transient jump point show up to take us to a new kind of oh, global event, uh, we, to a global event, yeah. and it's there for the whole week. I'm realizing I, I probably uh, wasn't supposed to share that. I wouldn't say we don't have plans for that. <laughs> well, wait, yeah, I'll just shush. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a lot of cool things that, that we can do with jump points. I'm really excited to add those transient ones in the future. Yeah. Uh, not for 4.0 though. I'm not uh, trying to... Uh, there, are, there are no transient yeah. jump points in 4.0 because I know there's people... That's not being coy. That's me being honest and real with you. One jump point in 4.0. Well, well one either side. One two-way jump point. Well, they go like this, so I guess it's one pair of jump points. Two, two one-way jump points. Be, be, because Rick doesn't want people crashing into each other because yeah. he also hates fun. We did our jump points and we didn't have the obstacles ready to show because for the fire show last night, uh, yesterday, we didn't have all the smoke effects uh, that the folks wanted. We saw a little bit of it at the end. We were able to get a little bit of it at the end. Uh, smoke is there. It's gorgeous. It can obscure everything. It makes it makes fire 10 times more scary. Come back next week. We'll be following up on the contested zones and asteroid bases. On ISC, we go back, we go down to the surface side of Pyro for a look at social gameplay. Um, all the things there are to do that isn't carnage and chaos. And there's actually more than one. We, we filled the whole episode of it. So we're going to introduce you to the Headhunter Gang and the and the brand new uh, uh, Citizens for uh, uh, Pros Prosperity. They were called Citizens for Pyro for a while. I think they're called Citizens for Prosperity now. I got so much information in here. I don't remember what's about. So be sure to check that out. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, that was Rick. That was Ed. I'm Jared. Uh, we might do a raid. I don't know if there's a raid. Say hi to whoever we raid to. Uh, be nice and take care, everybody. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye.